no state should hands should be tied for years right. by by somebody that was voted in by a previous office. Okay, right. and that yeah. I wholeheartedly agree with you. I think yeah. you're rational on that yeah. front. Yeah. But um, that should be unconstitutional yeah. to even. <laughs> I'm with you. I think it's That's, foolhardy to go that route, and that's what they're yeah. looking at. But at the same time, though, you still have some questions and concerns, he yeah. does, about an income tax. Mm -hmm. and, and but he makes the main point that's relevant today, right mm -hmm. now, is not to prohibit it. Right. Down and, the road, maybe. Down some, the road, may not yeah. be for it now, but maybe right. people's right. minds change, right. um, however that is. But now, here again, we have a caller here who's obviously a bright guy that... I'm getting mixed messages mm -hmm. from him right. on his call. It sounds like he's someone that might um, benefit and right. agree with some of what you're talking about mm -hmm. by adding an income tax, but at the same time, mm -hmm. he has these other concerns about just adding another tax. Yeah, and that, as I said before, that, that we hear that a lot. We understand that, but in point of fact, it sounds very much like he would be paying no state income tax or mm -hmm. very little, and certainly less than he's paying now in sales tax and he uh, sounds again we don't know more than what he yeah. said uh, he sounds very much like most Tennesseans who would actually benefit by this proposal again we can't lock in what future legislators are due but an active citizenry who want to be sure their representatives adequately fund needed services but not overspend and overcommit. Uh, mm -hmm. Tennessee has a long history of being fiscally conservative. Yeah. And as long as they're adequately funding services, that's a good thing. We shouldn't go way into debt or expand our budget uh, unnecessarily. But there are existing needs. Uh, uh, every year, uh, for the last several years, uh, commissioners have gone before uh, the governors uh, mm -hmm. and have said, you know, we, we are doing what you said, we need to uh, Slash make, cut. make yeah. cut, but it's not easy and it's not desirable. And you say, we got to go to a break, but yeah. you, you say in the next, um, you know, three, four years, when they're asked to do further of these cuts, I mean, I know some people are already feeling the squeeze, Absolutely. Care otherwise. Absolutely. When is it really going to hit people in the mouth? Well, and I mean mm -hmm. the general populace, not just right. the poorest right. of the poor, who right. are the ones suffering the first. Right. When are we going to get hit in the mouth? How many years? I, I think it's it's already coming, really. Okay. Uh, you know, it's it's not as visible to most Tennesseans, but uh, it's 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 right upon yeah. us. I Everyone believe. wants their services; they don't want to pay right. taxes. We'll right. take a break and be back uh, with more of your calls and more of our conversation right after this. Stay with. Me. Welcome back, everyone, to Morning Line. Nick Barris here on a Tuesday. We're talking, you see, Tennesseans for Fair Taxation. Two representatives from that group, the board chair, Dick Williams, and executive director, Elizabeth Wright, are here. Um, this group here advocates the idea down the road of perhaps a, a sales tax, or rather an income tax in Tennessee, which is nowhere on the radar now, in my yeah. opinion, that it's going to pass anytime yeah. soon. But it still is there, and the legislative session starts today, and there's always talk of <coughs> some type of tax reform. We're going to take your phone calls. Thanks to both of you for coming on Thank this you. morning. And Thanks for having me. Let's go to Donnie next. Uh, Donnie, good morning. Good morning. Hi, Donnie. Go ahead. Um, I know it's an old question, but the lottery, it's just for schools. But why don't you just use the interest, not the money itself, but just the interest off of it and try to keep the taxes down? Yeah, a lot of people yeah. still like Donnie searching for other ways, yeah, right, other right, alternatives right. to revenue sources yeah, than yeah, taxes. And yeah, you hear that, Donnie, you're not the only one that's mentioned it. Yeah, of course, yeah. the Constitution very clearly lays out exactly how the lottery money right, is going to be right. spent. And there's yeah, no wiggle room there. And they're already talking about whether mm -hmm. what's coming in now on the lottery is enough to pay for what it's right. said. They may for. have to scale back on so, some of the scholarships. Uh, and, and the lottery is even more regressive than a sales tax. Unfortunately, a large portion of the people who play the lottery really, in a lot of respects, shouldn't be. I mean, they had the right to, and that's fine, but that we shouldn't be raising a significant amount of the state taxes by encouraging people to gamble. Mm. and losing in most mm -hmm. cases. You, you know, of course, you hear about the, the big winners and, yeah. and congratulations to them, <laughs> but uh, it's not the best way to raise 
most of the money. Uh, uh, we we don't uh, we're not advocating repeal by any means, but it's not really the way to raise significant yeah. amount of money. It's right. funding education on the hopes and dreams of people who are struggling right. and really hoping that right. they can catch a break. And that's the, yeah. those that are earning the least primarily are the I ones know. that are paying. And it's crazy, ones, but again, yeah. it's their free will. And oh, of course. Yeah. Yeah. Nothing yeah. wrong with that. Yeah. 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 yeah, nothing wrong with it. It's the way it goes. But yeah, the lottery, though, money is, again, it's locked up and really yeah. can't be touched. And there's some question if there's even enough there to continue to provide right. the scholarships. Exactly. Let's exactly. go to Gary. Gary, good morning. Good morning, Nick. Hi, Gary. Go ahead. Uh, okay. I just want to say that uh, I've had two opportunities to uh, live in Commonwealth states, and I declined on both of them for that reason of uh, state income tax. And uh, and if you've ever been to Kentucky and North Carolina, you know that if you're relying on state si uh, street signs to get where you're going, you're just going to be lost. <laughs> and then they have to come up and... Um, you have to buy a special tag if you're pulling a trailer with a lawnmower on it. It has to have a tag, and you get into all kinds of other taxes. And it's just like when they uh, pass the uh, seatbelt law. They said we'll never pull you over for not wearing a seatbelt. We we show you where that went. And I think Tennessee does great, and uh, I fully support uh, the bill that blocks a state income tax. For, for, for eternity, forever, <laughs> forever. Oh, sure. well, I mean, but, I mean that, so much better than those Commonwealth states. I don't know why we would want to be like them. Oh, no, I, I'm, I'm just saying to me, and like I said, I, I haven't really made my mind up on the tax reform itself. I just don't like the idea of handcuffing future generations of citizenry or lawmakers with something that we're passing now, and who knows how things might change. Right. But mm -hmm. um, So that's my case. Uh, yeah. Like I say, though, um, we see where it got Kentucky and Carolina and Virginia, and uh, they're poor states. Yeah, I, mean, listen, I think Tennessee does great. I wouldn't leave it for anything. Well, I agree on that yeah. front in terms of our debt. Well, what, what would you say to people like him who say that, you know, some of the states with the biggest fiscal problems mm -hmm. have some of the highest state income taxes. Um, is there a correlation there? People see that, and I'm not just yeah, talking right, about California right. yeah. or New York, but some people well, see that and they go, well, no, wait a second. They've got a high debt level and they've got their income tax. We don't want to be like that. Well, it may be more of a uh, an effect than a cause. In other words, uh, a, st a state that doesn't handle their money well, mm -hmm. maybe they have to have a high income tax. Yeah. Uh, but that doesn't necessarily mean that it was caused by the income tax. Okay. And I, again, I, we've said several times, that I think we can trust ten the Tennessee legislature and, and citizens not to get into that kind of a situation. Now, it, it takes work. I mean, you know, uh, it, it takes a uh, vigilant uh, citizenry and uh, fiscally conservative legislators and, and administrators, uh, but we've had that, and we can keep that. Uh, there's, there's not necessary the fact that some states have a high income tax and high debt and high expenditure doesn't necessarily mean it's because of the income tax. All right, let's go next to uh, Carol. Now we've got a Carol. Good morning, Carol. <laughs> Hi. Hi, go ahead. It's not Terrell. Yes, it's gotcha. Terrell. <laughs> Thank you. I got that straight now. I appreciate it. Sorry. You go ahead. Um, what I was trying to say is I'm not for or against a state income tax. Okay. Right now, if they put a, a state income tax, like, say, Michigan did, and it got mainly factory workers and auto workers, the, the guys that made $25 an hour. When all those people got laid off, they lost that money. And then where were they? Where were they? they had to find another access. Ah. They've got to put it on something that's dependable, that's not going to fluctuate with the economy. Yeah. If, yeah. if the Everything guy gets laid off, yeah. Mm -hmm. But yeah, and you, you know what? That's a good point. I hadn't thought of it that way. But at the same time, you, you could also say, though, at the same time, if they're losing their jobs, they're they're not spending as right. much. So the sales tax also right. isn't coming in as much. That's a tricky right. thing. Exactly. Yeah. They're all kind. Well, so the little guy don't have it to spend. Yeah. Right. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And the big guy's not spending it. He's smart enough not to bet on the lottery. Aha. <laughs> yeah. Uh -huh. yeah. yeah. Okay. What do you say to that? Uh, well, again, uh, we think the solution is to have a balanced system. In a, in a poor economy, they all go down, right. but actually uh, 
even in this recession, there are a lot of people who are still making a lot of money. And if they're paying their fair share, that's more income than you're going to get off of the sales tax, where virtually everybody's cutting back, except those, those rich people. Mm -hmm. So it, 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 the idea of a balanced system can weather the storm better overall. Both, mm -hmm. you know, income and sales are going to go down in a in a recession. Right. But so, but you, the idea is to di diversify yeah. a bit. Yeah. yeah. And yeah. if you think about it in terms of right when people are in the midst of the recession and people are losing their jobs, mm -hmm. and, and as she was talking about, you know, people lose their health insurance and then they mm -hmm. get sick and they mm -hmm. might need to turn mm -hmm. to ten care. Well, funding's been cut, so the services aren't available to as many people. Right. Um, we want jobs. We want more companies to come to Tennessee to bring us jobs. But um, Commissioner Haggerty with the uh, Economic and Community Development Department recently in budget hearings to Governor Haslam said, mm -hmm. you know, that the lack of an income tax actually hurts Tennessee. I was going to ask you, now, how yeah. so? He how said so? that a lot of companies that, you know, are looking to move around, they get tax credits for having, you know, em for hiring employees who are then going to be paying federal and state taxes, mm -hmm. income taxes. Mm -hmm. And without that incentive to businesses, I they see. might go to one of our surrounding states. Right. And if you think about right. our local businesses who create the bulk of our jobs, right. with a 10% sales tax and with Tennessee having so many counties on the border, people are going over the border to shop, right. and it's really hurting our local businesses or online, where that right now, you know, Tennessee doesn't yeah. require for right. them to collect a sales tax for us. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. um, it's it's all you know connected. And right when people are hurting the most and needing those public services, they're being cut. Our local businesses that create jobs are being hurt, right. and mm -hmm. uh, and so those are some things to consider as well. Absolutely. Wow. All right. The number again: seven three seven seven five eight seven. How do you feel about the tax issue? We should say that uh, Tennesseans for fair taxation, I guess, are having a rally uh, at ten right. o'clock this morning in a news conference over at Legislative Plaza. They're with the Occupy folks. Yeah. Technically, War Memorial. War Plaza. Memorial. You're right. It's War <laughs> Memorial. You're correct. That's that's technically what that's it's okay. called. And let's go next to uh, Mike. Mike. Good morning. Yes, uh, I just want to ask you about the lottery. Um, okay, um, it's, go ahead. I know when the lottery gets up to really high, $200 million, it sets a very small percentage of what the money they take in. Mm -hmm. I just wondered what they do with the rest of the money. It's got to be hundreds of million dollars to get up to a $20 million prize. Mm -hmm. And uh, where, where does the rest of the money go? I know they say it goes for education. There's a very small part of it, I think, goes for education. Does the rest of it go into the general fund and they can do what they want to with it without explaining no. where it goes? Yeah, no, it's, it's, it's very clearly, I don't know, the monies, and yeah. we'd love to have Rebecca Paul on again sometime yeah. to talk about it, the director <laughs> yeah. of the lottery, but yeah. you know, they have to pay money to administer the plan, yeah. you know, the lottery, and then the payouts. And it definitely does not go to the general fund. They, they do have currently a reserve, but it's, it's reserved for the, the scholarship. Right. And, of course, that's dwindling now, as we said before. But... We're not experts at all. Yeah, yeah, that's a little off the lottery at all. People always bring up the lottery oh, when sure, we talk sure. about the monies it's, and, and where the monies part, are going you know, to come Like from. it or not, it's a part of our system, and it is funding some education scholarships. Uh, un, uh, as, as I understand it, it's really uh, a, a lot of the people getting it uh, need it less than some of the people don't get it, but that's... Sure. That's another issue. Well, yeah. <laughs> you know, I wanted to get back to the, the point, you know, Elizabeth was making just about attracting business and what we heard yeah. uh, told to the governor the other day. But mm -hmm. um, I know in some reports, uh, I'm, I'm looking here, uh, jurisdictions that impose an income tax, mm -hmm. according to some research, generate a given level of revenue, um, you know, from that. And that, as a result, they experience lower rates of economic growth. Now, do you buy into that, uh, that, that perhaps because of that, there wasn't as much investment going on? I see what you were saying about the ability to attract new businesses, mm -hmm. but for the ones that are over already here, um, I suppose if you keep them here because you have lower sales tax and people mm -hmm. are buying things, that's one thing. But economic, mm -hmm. can it stifle investment? Well, I, I think the issue is more complex than that. Uh, businesses obviously look at the tax situation mm -hmm. when they're locating or relocating sure. or expanding, but they also look at things like uh, the uh, uh, the location. Tennessee is ideally located with the interstate system oh, yeah, and all. Uh, we have good, reasonably good weather and climate, uh, a good atmosphere. We really need a little more money to be 
paying more for education, having better education system mm -hmm. and increasing the education level of our workers for companies that are coming in. But uh, so it's, it's, it's that is not the only thing they look at. They do, but uh, it's it's not a direct correlation, we don't feel. Right. It's, it's more complex than that. Yeah, you also have to think about businesses that are coming here, they want to bring, you know, workers here, they want and they want their children to be able to go to a, right. a quality public mm -hmm. school. We're, we're not right. ranked that high in our the quality of our yeah. public education. They want um, mm -hmm. public transportation, right. which a lot of, you know, localities in Tennessee can't uh -huh. afford to have a good public transportation system. They want public safety. Well, just two years ago, I think we, you know, per capita had the second highest violent crime rate nationally, you know, yeah. um, in, in the nation. And so these are all things that hurt the perception of Tennessee. And like the gentleman who called and said, I love Tennessee. I've mm -hmm. lived here my whole life. Right. I do too. And that's why I do this job, because I really want my state to be the best that it can be to, you know, bring in great businesses sure. for Tennesseans like us and uh, give us good jobs and to give us a great quality of life. And these are all things that are you know, funded by mm -hmm. the investment that we all make through our taxes. And mm -hmm. our, our bottom line isn't we want everybody to pay more taxes. We want the wealthy to pay their fair share, which they're not right now, to lift up mm -hmm. those working people. And we want to make sure that there's enough money that we do have great communities and that we are safe here and that, you know, people can have public transportation and get a great education and go out to a state park that's, mm -hmm. you know, open and, and well taken care of and yeah. bring in tourists as well. So these are all, you know, things that are connected to this issue, I think. All right, good. On that point, we'll take a break when we come back. More of your phone calls. John, hold, stay there. The number 737-7587. It's our final segment coming back, but just your take on where you stand on taxes. Have you voted for a tax increase recently? I'm just wondering. <laughs> They've been on the ballot, wheel taxes and others. When was the last time you voted for one? Because they fail. Yeah. All the time. I well, voted for my share. Most of the time. I have. Yeah. I have voted for my share. Most of the time. Uh, but we'll take a break and, and hear what you have to say right after this. Stay with us. Happy that. We are back on Morning Line. It's our final segment this morning. We're talking about taxes with our guests, two members of uh, Tennesseans for Fair Taxation, advocating the idea of a state income tax somewhere down the line. Dick Williams and Elizabeth Wright, nice to have you both Thank on. You. We're going to have a rally out uh, at War Memorial Plaza coming up at around 9.45, 10 o'clock. And really, one of the focuses, I guess you said, is on uh, Bill uh, SJR 0221, which, if passed, would ban an income tax in Tennessee, not just now, but forever. Right. Which, right. again, I'm, aside from the tax issue, my opinion, I don't like the idea of having lawmakers ban anything forever because things change right. over time. Right. But you both, I think, feel especially strongly because of the tax issue. Right, absolutely. Uh, and, and, and as you said, the, the issue now is not whether or not to pass an income tax, but whether this legislature and technically the next one uh, and a public vote would prevent future legislatures when they understand the need or if and when they understand the need they would have to re-amend the Constitution which yeah. would take six to eight years yeah. to do and it just we feel it just locks people in away from an option that they ought to at least have. Let's just face it though, there are one trick ponies at the legislature and they're <laughs> one and not just yeah. here but at oh, the yeah. federal level okay. and yeah. they were elected on one thing and one thing only. That's under no circumstance will I ever have anything to do with that four letter word tax. Right. <laughs> right. Right. Yeah. And that's gotten yeah. them elected because yeah. people feel very yeah. strongly about that, which I understand. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I yeah. care about how the money's spent and oh, raised. Sure, don't we all but yeah. you know, I'm tired of one trick pony. Yeah. 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 Well, and that's fine for them to make that promise. You know, I don't agree with it, but mm -hmm. that's that's fine for, you know, them and for the people who mm -hmm. vote for them sure. to believe that way, but to say that no other legislators ever right. down the line, no matter whatever happens in Tennessee, a natural disaster or right. any unforeseen circumstances, will ever be able to really make our tax structure more fair mm -hmm. and bring in more revenue mm -hmm. for the state, to say that is really short-sighted. Yeah. And that's our big concern it's today. Just things right. change. Right. Right. Exactly. Right. Right. And yeah. that, that doesn't mean that it's always good to keep your options open. Be passed any time soon because no. it's not no. it's not going to go anywhere but who knows down the road so I know that's one of the issues you yeah, guys are absolutely. talking about mm -hmm. let's uh, let's go next to Carl Carl good morning good morning hi Carl go ahead I want to talk about the tax increase okay what do you want to say I want to talk about go ahead you can go ahead Carl I wonder if his line just yeah, cut off. Yeah. It may have cut off. I'm going to put him on hold just in case yeah, his line yeah, just went short yeah. and we'll see if we can get him back. Yeah. But uh, let's go to Bill. Bill, good morning. 
Are you there, Bill? Bill. Yeah. Hey, go Good ahead. Morning. Hi there. Good morning. What's on your mind? Uh, I, I just got to say that uh, the more money you give them, the more they're going to spend. <laughs> And the problem with the uh, state income tax, you're creating another bureaucracy. Uh, people will have more paperwork to do, more taxes to fill out, personal paperwork. And look at the p people you're going to have to hire to uh, uh, implement this system. Uh, state income tax, to me, uh, would be a major detriment to the state of Tennessee. Who would move here if... Uh, you had a state income tax. Your businesses wouldn't want to come or nothing like that. I mean, you know, we got enough taxes now. The thing we need to do is manage the money better and make it more fair for the taxes. Cut out Greenbelt and quit uh, giving so many tax breaks to people that uh, can afford to pay and uh, get off the backs of the poor. If you put a state income tax in, look at the, uh, you got to fill out a, uh, uh, income tax, now you'd have to fill out a state income tax. Just more paperwork and more bureaucracy and more money for them to spend. That's about all I got to say. All right. Thank you for your call. You know, um, yeah. all right. And that, you know, his point, again, there's others that are probably going to echo that. Yeah. The administration of it, we kind of touched on it, but yeah. Yeah. the cost of adding another, there's going to be some costs oh, adding absolutely. a new tax. There's yeah, no absolutely. question about it. But, but when a state adds an income tax or has an income tax, uh, they basically take a certain line on your federal income tax. So a lot of the hassle, frankly, is dealing with your federal income tax. And then it's a fairly simple translation from that to uh, a short, I don't know if it's one page or not, uh, state tax that that uh, feeds off of that, uh, mm -hmm. then you have special exemptions, uh, state yeah. exemptions. It was really interesting what he said about the uh, people moving here or there. Now, I don't know about you. I've lived in several states around right. the country over the years, and uh, right. I've never once, before I moved somewhere, said, what's the tax, what's the tax? rate here? Right. Do you well, yeah. I mean, I never thought yeah. about it, and maybe right. I should have, right. but I mean, right. I usually go places because the job brought me there, or the right. family brought me there, right. or my college brought me there, right. but I never right. once thought before I moved there, oh, I don't like their tax scale. Yeah, I'm not, right. oh, they have too much right. of a debt ceiling. I mean, now, yeah. businesses, maybe. Yeah. But, I mean, do people move? And, well, and, and, and I certain, so. certain, I've heard it maybe some. Maybe a few from, rare individuals do. I've heard it some from retirees. Of okay, course. I can see that but, maybe. Uh, and so I wouldn't want to say nobody does, but that's usually not the main criteria, even for businesses. Now, mm -hmm. It factors in, uh, but you right. right. Maybe the super wealthy that yeah. make a ton yeah. of money. Yeah, right. Like that. Right. I've had a couple of Titans players in the past oh, tell yeah. me, you know, they like it here. <laughs> because there's no income tax I'm and those sure guys are making yeah. some big money. Yeah. And like he said, you know, get off the backs of the poor, right, you know, right, and, and right. make those people who can afford to pay more pay. I mean, it's, it's an interesting do. point that callers who, uh, on the surface, don't agree with our, you know, proposal actually have the same values that we right. have. It's right. just understanding how it would be implemented and, and believing that you yeah. would pay less with right. these taxes. And ultimately, yeah. it really, because I can't say that there hasn't been enough education in this realm because you guys and others yeah. are talking. It's sure. complicated. Sure. Yeah. But I really have to think that many of these people do have a basic understanding, though there may be some misleading yeah. aspects to it. But I also think there's just a massive amount of distrust yeah, there. Absolutely. And absolutely. fear that, you know what, I hear what you're saying and I like it, but I don't yeah. trust it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. They just don't trust the lawmakers to do what's right if it's right. passed. And they, they, yeah. They're wary, and they just would rather play it safe and not add yeah. a whole new tax to the table. Right. And I can completely understand oh, where oh, they're sure. coming from. Yeah, yeah. It's not like we're surprised to hear that. Yeah. But uh, we just need to keep keep uh, talking about the fact that uh, that it, it, it's not just that simple, but that again, a, a vigilant citizenry and fiscally conservative uh, legislators can manage a system and this would be a better system to manage because it would be balanced and would have diversity of income streams that could meet our needs more adequately without actually raising the, uh, the rate. Mm -hmm. Frequently, yeah. I just have I, to I, trust in that. You can't That's say it never be can't. raised, but uh, it shouldn't have to be raised significantly. Let's go to Chip. Chip, good morning. Good morning. Hi, Chip. Go ahead. Uh, are these people for? Uh, <laughs> They're for an income, income tax. tax. Yes. Good. 
because if Tennessee doesn't do a state income tax, it's killing the little people in Tennessee. Good. And as a former Tennessee resident, I'll tell you how it hurts because I don't even have but about $1,100 to come in a month. And where it hurts is when you go to the grocery store or somewhere and you got to pay sales tax. Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah, uh, paying um, for a gallon of milk hurts you a lot more than someone who makes $100,000 a year. Absolutely. You're right. Absolutely. Thank yeah, you. Thank you, Chip. I mean, I yep, mean Chip's, Chip's lived it, and Chip, of course, uh, had lived in yeah. Shelbyville, recently moved down to oh, okay. Atlanta, Georgia, and uh -huh. he knows what he's talking about in that right. regard because money right. was really tight for him. Uh, hit on that, if you would, just uh, the, the, you know, they say it's a regressive or how uh, sales tax hits the poor more than the rich. Right. Is, right. That's yeah. really straight up what it is. Yeah, it? yeah, it is. It is. Uh, yeah, you it's know, more out know. of their weekly paycheck or yeah. monthly paycheck to pay for food. It's a larger chunk yeah. than it is for yeah. someone who's got a yeah. much larger paycheck. Yeah. Uh, you, your viewers probably can't uh, see this yeah, very well, that out, but, but the bottom line is what we can show graphically as well as uh, statistically that the lowest income families pay a much larger percent, not amount, but percent of their income, and then obviously have less uh, income to buy other things. They pay a larger percent of their income mm -hmm. in, in taxes, primarily sales taxes. And with our proposal, the overall tax that citizens would pay would be roughly percentage-wise the same. Not exactly, but so it, yeah. it, it balances it out. When you go over there, you know, to the pla or, you know, to legislative capital and, yes. and talk with lawmakers, they listen to you? They listen, yeah. yeah. I mean, they yeah. don't all agree, obviously. No, Most right, of them right, don't. Right. But, I yeah. mean, you'll go in there and will you have yeah. some, uh, you know, good debates? Yeah, yeah. And virtually all of them, a few actually refuse to see us, mm -hmm. but uh, mm -hmm. virtually all of them uh, will at least talk and be civil and, and to some extent understand what we're saying. Mm -hmm. But... Uh, I think yeah. the legislators need to hear more from their constituents and the right. voters, people who've you know, right. said, yeah, this would be great, but we're concerned that if this happened, our taxes would go up. Mm -hmm. You know, We're concerned that they're just going to spend and spend and spend the more money we give them. Right. Well, that is part of our democracy, is that when right. we go to talk to the legislators, they, they want to get reelected, of course. Yeah. You know, They want to mm -hmm. keep that position. And if the people that they are representing and their constituents and their districts are telling them, this is what we want to see and this is how we want to see it happen, and they yeah. hold them accountable through the voting process, right. you know, I think a lot of legislators understand that this actually is what Tennessee needs. We hear that from people you wouldn't expect to but hear that from. they hear from enough. But, you know, right. aside from exactly. Chip, we just yeah. get a cross-section. Right. I think right. you can tell right. by yeah. the, the general tone yeah. of the callers today that the vast majority, I yeah. think, uh, still don't yeah. like the idea yeah. of an income yeah. tax. They're not there yet. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, But, you know, as you continue to work it, yeah. you know, yeah. that day yeah. may indeed come. I want to remind yeah. you again, then, uh, just be informed and, and tell your, yeah. your lawmaker exactly what it is you support. Absolutely. Absolutely. If you're for it or against it, but it's mm. always good to be involved. Listen, I, I right. want to thank you both, Dick Williams and thank Elizabeth you. Wright, for coming on. Thank you. It's a pleasure. It's always good to talk good about this. Uh, you know, it's a healthy good debate. Session. Sure. Thank yeah. You. We'll see you again sometime Absolutely. soon. We'll follow certainly what goes yes, on with this. Yes, and be on the hill at, uh, at 10. Yeah, 10 o'clock <laughs> for the rally. the rally. Thank you much. Folks, thank, thank you. you. I'll be right back with a programming note right after this. All right, that is a wrap this morning. Our thanks again to uh, Dick Williams and Elizabeth Wright, uh, both with Tennesseans for Fair Taxation. They're a, a group that lobbies up there with the lawmakers on the income tax issue. And, uh, you know, it was just them alone. We'll have other folks up here to talk about other aspects of taxes and why a lot of people don't like the idea of income tax. But I think a lot of our viewers made it very clear why they don't. And I think I understand exactly why. That's one reason my mind's not entirely made up, because I do think there needs to be tax reform. But like a lot of you, I think, I have a general distrust of the way government is going to handle taxes and you give them a new source of revenue. Does that mean they're just going to take more money and then go spending it willy-nilly? I, I need to have that confidence that that would not happen. But I am open to change. And uh, so it's always a good discussion. We'll see what the lawmakers do this session. Listen, uh, tomorrow, interesting program. Again, a lot of things uh, happening. and. Um, Controversy sparked over some changes that the Family Action Council of Tennessee wants to make to the anti-bullying law. A lot of law issues here, and you know, 
who can be protected. Those changes have some members of various communities upset about this. David Fowler with the uh, Family Action Council will be on tomorrow. Also Chris Sanders with Tennessee Equality Project uh, kind of talks about alternative lifestyles and who can be protected and who can't under anti-bullying. Um, it's something that uh, I've followed closely and I've got some, some good questions for both these individuals. Uh, anyone who's been bullied I think will want to attend this. If you're a bully yourself you'll want to join us in the program tomorrow as well. So we'll talk anti-bullying law and some of the changes proposed tomorrow on Morning Line. So we'll see you then. First thing Wednesday morning. Everyone have a great day. Bye-bye.